Welcome back to another episode from Checking From Behind You Beauties. I'm Zach, joined as always by my co-host Preston. We finally got regular season hockey yep. back. I know we talked a little bit about it last week with Nordic. We had our hot takes, season preview, all that fun stuff. We have some news to talk about for once and for all. Oh, yeah. I mean, every team's playing now. I believe every team's played a game. At the uh, the, not every team. We I, have I, teams I, playing their first game tonight. But by the time you guys okay. are listening and watching I think first game is tonight. Yeah, yeah, and Anaheim, too. Okay. So there's well, a couple teams whose first game's tonight as of recording this. Ovi's scoring tonight. Dude, Ovi is 42 goals away, man. He's scoring tonight. You think you have him scoring? Lock it in. Okay, I like that. You heard it. Anytime goal scorer Alexander Ovechkin. All right, so I, I mean, want the game's going to be over by the time this is posted. Dude, so. I'm mad. <laughs> um, all right, so we have some news to dive into. Yeah, we have goaltender news to be exact because Jeremy Swayman finally signed with the Boston Bruins. There was never a doubt he was going to get signed before the first game of the season for the Boston Bruins. Now we no, didn't. I thought there was some doubt. You thought there was really? really I mean, really? they got they got pretty close. It was like less than a week before the season. It was started. Sunday, and yeah. their first game was thir- Wednesday or Thursday, I think. I think it was Tuesday. no, it was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Corpusalo had to start. Mm-hmm. He did not look good. I mean, in, he looked. In his, in his defense, the most of the Bruins didn't look very good, but. I mean, but still, though, like, that's not a good look for Corpus Allo after having a horrible season coming in against uh, one of the best. I mean, theoretically, I think, like, when the next time the Bruins play the Panthers, I, I don't think Corpus Allo will be starting. No, it's going to be Sway. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, the contract, I believe it was an 8 by 8.25 I think it's a good deal for both it's sides. A, hey, listen, okay, this is what I have an issue with, okay? If this would have happened July 1st or July 2nd, everybody would be saying the same goddamn yeah. thing yeah, why, about wait, the why, deal. Why put it so close and wait? And he, he misses all of training camp, all of the preseason. I, I don't get it. I mean, but you know, he, he played the other night. He won. So I mean, didn't have the greatest stats. He led in four goals, I believe. Say percentage of like eight six six or something uh, like that. But I mean, it's he'll, his first, he'll, it's his first game fine. back. No preseason, no training camp. I'm not worried about him. He'll be fine. Yeah. Um, great deal for both sides. Again, like, I, I don't know. Jeremy's, I'm just glad this is over. We don't have to talk about it anymore. A lot. Of, some of the people that were saying some stuff online. I know you're not. You try to stay out for social media because there's cuckoo heads out there yes. that say random shit and want attention and everything. But I run all the social media, so the only social media that I really want to go on is like the podcast stuff because I interact with yeah and certain That's stuff. And, yeah. So like. There's nothing but hockey stuff on the Twitter feed, and half the stuff is Jeremy Swayman, and it's saying stuff about. I mean, it was a big story. I've, I've, yeah, it was, but like, there's people saying that the Jeremy Swayman might have played his last game in a Boston Bruins uniform. Now I know I brought that question up before, <laughs> but like, it's different though because it's a hypothetical for us. It's a topic of discussion. It causes well, yeah, a we, stir. I mean, we can't not talk about right, it. It's not like we're sitting here saying because when I asked you the question, you said no, it's gonna get done, even if it's after the first first game of the year. I said the same. thing. Thing. It got done Sunday, two days before the game. Mm-hmm. So I'm expecting Jeremy Swayman. It's going to take him a little bit of time yeah. to get into the groove of things. But come a couple weeks from now, I think we'll be back to seeing the same old Swayman and yeah. Corpus Allo playing once every six games at this point. Yeah, Maybe. I think that's the best thing for the Bruins. So. And speaking of more goaltender news, his counterpart, Linus Allmark, the next day signs in Four year by eight point two five million dollar extension with the Ottawa Senators. When he got traded to Ottawa right before the July first deadline of the start of the new year, they were like they gave up not a ton. I thought yeah, I didn't think they really gave up a lot for him. And there were some talks wondering if Walmart was gonna sign an extension. Yeah, I thought I could have sworn I heard like when he got traded there, they weren't gonna talk extension right away. I think Allmark wanted to see how he felt on the team and how he liked living there. I wasn't expecting extension talk until yeah, thought, after the first I, of the yeah, year. I thought I thought that you know, they. It wasn't impossible for an extension to get done. I thought they would wait maybe till maybe around the trade deadline. Yeah. See, you know, see how he's feeling. See if he like. See how Bo- see how Ottawa's doing. I almost said Boston there. <laughs> uh, I mean, but Allmark looked really good in this first game for Ottawa. He did. First off, I can't believe Le- Allmark is already thirty-one years old. I mean, he's That's been crazy. In the for a while. Yeah, he has. But in his first game, though, he only allowed one goal at a six six. He, he had a nine six nine save percentage. Yeah, no, he had a great game, and Ottawa they won. Ottawa desperately needed a goalie, and if they can get this consistency out of Allmark, they might make the playoffs. I'm kind of mad that I was really low on the Senators. Now I know I don't want to overreact mm-hmm. on just one game, but Allmark, like they just added goaltender, they added Allmark. He makes the team ten times better. Like I don't have the Senators making the playoffs, but they're in that. Tier of, yeah, they're they're, they, they're in that lump in the Eastern Conference where you have like four or five teams that 
theoretically could be in that last wild card spot. And like, if the Senators make the playoffs, I won't bet an eye. If they miss the playoffs, I won't bet an eye. They're in like that little tier for me because I think the roster is good enough to make the playoffs. It's, can they put it together? They had a horrible goal tending last season. Get Allmark, and on top of it, they get Allmark on a four-year deal. And I think it's great for them too because yeah. Allmark could have went out and be like, "Listen, I want a seven-year deal worth eight point two five, eight point five million dollars." I mean, too. you give the do what you been... want. You, I mean, when was the last time Ottawa had a goalie? I mean, Craig Anderson was pretty good for them for a while. I mean, they almost got to the Stanley Cup final with him. But... I think Craig Anderson is your last good goalie. competent goaltender. Goal. Yeah. That you, so I, I'm glad for Ottawa Senators fans. I don't like the Senators as a Sabres fan, but at the end of the day, I'm a hockey fan. I like this for both sides. Yeah, I mean, this might be a bit of a hot take here, but I think if Omar can post above an, like a 925 save percentage for the year, I think Ottawa's a playoff team. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Omar's capable of that. Like, we've seen it before. Yes. Like, he won a Vesna trophy. He won the, historically the, one of the best historic seasons ever for a goalie that year. He won the, I mean, but Boston broke like a ton of records that year, but that was a stacked team. But Omar's still a great goalie. Goalie. He's a great goalie. I want to move on to Igor Shesterkin because mm-hmm. he turned down an eight-year by $11 million deal or just earlier this past week. And there's reports circulating that the Rangers and him are close on an eight-year by $12.5 million deal. There's a bunch of reports circulating around New York Ranger reporters. And I think that'd be a great deal for both teams. He'd be the highest-paid goaltender Deservedly of all so. time. Deservedly he's, so. I mean, if he's on the track that he's on, he is almost a surefire Hall of Fame. I don't like using Stanley Stanley Cups as the one thing of I think if whether he wins you get a Stanley the, Cup. I think he's, he's a he's a lock. A Hall of he's a lock. I he's mean, a lock. I think the only two goalies I would say in the league that I could put in the discussion for best goalie in the league, at least regular season wise. And if you want to call it postseason, you can too. That might change the conversation mm-hmm. a little bit. But it's Igor Shesterkin and Connor Hellebuck, in my opinion. And then UC Saros is third. You, I think you can have more debate when you get to the third spot, but I think the top two kind of it's you can't argue against. I I, I I kind of agree with you. I think Igor Shesterkin is in the tier of his own, and I think Connor well, I and think Saros Hellebuck, are together. I think that holds Hellebuck back is he hasn't been great in the playoffs recently, and Shesterkin elevates his game in mm-hmm. the playoffs. I think that's what makes him the. I think Shesterkin is the best goalie in the league. Yes. And, you know, he deserves to be paid like the best goal in the league. And for the Rangers, the sooner they get this deal done, the better, because they don't have to worry about it. Because you imagine how stressful it will be if they don't have a deal done at the end of the year as a pending UFA. And then he's going to ask for way more. Because I think Chris was might have been telling us, because he, he like is addicted to social mm-hmm. media. He's on there all day. So he, he tells us news, like, way before we hear anything else. And I think he was saying that Shesterkin wanted the shorter-term deal. And if the Rangers wanted the long-term deal, they'd have to pay a little bit more. Yes. And... Honestly, I think if if this rumor is true, at twelve and a half million for eight years, I think that's a really that's good deal. fine. That's where honestly, that's where we'd all expect him to get paid. Yeah, I mean, I think a few weeks ago we were talking like fourteen million. Like, who cares? Who cares if he's a goaltender or not? He's shown you that he can elevate his game in the playoffs and carry a team to the Eastern mm-hmm. Conference Finals twice. So pay, he did it twice. Twice. So pay him like he's just your normal Connor McDavid, Nikita I mean, Kucherov. He's their MVP. He's exactly. the best player on their team. They don't win without him. Exactly. And you got him locked up for eight years. You don't have to worry about a goalie for eight years. There's only a select number of goaltenders that I'd be willing to pay. And Igor Shesterkin is easily one of them. He's on the top of that list. Yeah, I mean, if the Rangers, because when the Rangers offer that eight by eleven, that was Drury A because. He's playing low because he's like testing the water. You don't as a GM. I mean, yeah, it's part of negotiation. Want, right, you, you don't start, want. You usually start with your worst offer. The, the player starts high, the coach starts low. I'm not the coach. The GM starts low. Like that's how it works. And then eventually, you guys work your way up or down to meet in the middle and everything. Mm-hmm. And that's the same thing that happened with Jeremy Swayman and the Bruins. So now it's happening with the Rangers. Except now it's happening quicker with the Rangers and I get this extension talk so you have all season to talk but if this gets done within the next couple days I'm I would not be shocked at all I would be happy for both sides because now you can go out and just play hockey not have to worry about it and another thing that I heard from the 32 thoughts podcast from the most recent episode Mm -hmm. on Friday was that when it comes to extension talks in the season, players don't like to be bothered by it. They want their agent to take care of it. If they need something, they're really players typically that involved in contract negotiations. I mean, that's what the agent is for. Not a ton, not as much during the season as it is during the uh, off season. Now, obviously like this player is not going to be sitting there on a three hour phone call with the agent and gym. Like that's, that's them too, whatever. Like they deal with that. I mean, I don't think typically players are even a part of those kinds of, no, no, they're not. They give the agent a number and what they want. And then the agent will, Mm-hmm. talk to the GM and negotiate and then the agent the comes back to the right the agent comes back to the player so I think this deal would be go, bo- 
both good for them. And then also, Alexi Lafreniere close on an 8x8 eight eight deal too. Again, that's great, but now if you're the Rangers, you're banking on Lafreniere to become that perennial 65, 70 point scorer. I think he could be more he than can, that. He can. I think he can be an 80 point scorer. Yeah. But... I mean, he's come. He's found his game. I know he's had a, he had a little bit of. How a many rough more start. years does he have left on his contract? Uh, this is the last year of his contract. Yeah, they signed him because you know he had a little bit of a slower start to his career. Mm-hmm. You know, coming in that COVID year was a little weird, but um, yeah, he's found his game. I think uh, Peter Laviolette has really helped him elevate his game because they did sign him to that bridge deal a couple years ago. Because it was he, he had a little bit of a rough yeah. start, but you know he's proven that. You know, he's worth keeping around. He's kind of living up to that number one pick status. The thing I'm curious about for the Rangers is, you know, their cap situation going forward because they got a lot of guys it's paying money. Rough. I think this puts the writing on the wall for them trading Jacob Truba after this season because if they get those deals done, that's an $8 million cap hit. You can't have that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get he's your captain. He's 30 years old. One year left on the deal. If you can move him, you move him. I th- Jacob Truba is almost for sure going to get moved I, by the offseason. I think what's going to happen, he's going to get moved by July 1st. I think it's going to happen. Yeah, it would definitely be an offseason trade because, I mean. They're not it, doing it at the you, deadline. Yeah, yeah. You're you, not trading. You need, you, he helps your team win. You keep him this year because they're all in it for the cup it, this year. This isn't an Ocposal situation where your captain is just one last run. Like, Jacob Truba can still help your team when he's your captain. He'll have a market. It's I mean, right. I, I don't know how many teams would be willing to eat that whole $8 million cap hit. There's only a couple teams. He has one year left after this year. I mean, but the right? Rangers might have to throw in a little bit extra to entice a team. Listen, if they contract. have to throw in a little bit extra. But he or... also has a modified no trade clause, so mm-hmm. there's only going to be a limited number of teams that he'll be willing to be. What is it, a 10-team no trade? Does it say on there or no? Because I think I think <sighs> it's a 10-team no trade, if I'm not if I'm almost 100% certain. So 12-team. 12 12-team, 12 okay. Next, close. If they trade him next year. Okay. If they trade him before July 1st, it's a 15-team no-trade list. Okay. After, it's a 12-team. So they might, it might be a post They might. Trade. They might wait until July or August to do it. Yeah, they might have to wait for the new cal- – it might, gives them a little bit more flexibility. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that if we see something not until the dead of the offseason, I wouldn't but be But even after that, like, okay, so Lafreniere takes up that $8 million, And if Shesterkin's mm-hmm. going up to 12 and a half, you're, you're still gaining. they still got to find a way to make the cap work. I you're mean, so Panarin's gaining. got one year up on his contract. I don't know if they get him to stick around unless he's willing to take a big uh, – pay cut uh i mean they got sabinajet locked up for a while Kreider, trocek's on a very team-friendly deal i mean they got some decisions to make and it's not gonna be easy i mean they got to pay keandre miller's gonna get a decent raise so i mean the cap is gonna go up so they'll have a little bit more spending money but it's gonna be really interesting to see how they handle the that. cap going up for the rangers might be their best friend to be honest with yeah. you especially with panarin coming up uh not this off season but the following off season his contract being up so who knows maybe with the cap going up we see an extension from him i'm not gonna go that far yet because that's a yeah, so no, easier I mean, way yeah i mean I, it sounds like a headache for chris Jordan to figure yeah. out and i'm glad i'm not him correct all right, all right. so some quick news Barkov is dealing with an injury. I yeah. believe he went he went feet first into a net or something bad. like that. I didn't see the video of it, but I heard about what happened. Yeah, he was there was an empty net. They were playing Ottawa and uh they pulled the goalie. I think they were down by a goal or two. No, I think they were down by a goal. Ottawa ended up winning three to one. They scored to the empty net. And Ottawa was chasing back was skating towards the end of the game. Barkov was back checking, trying to stop him from scoring. And I think he collided with a player and they both went hard into the boards. But Barkov like took the brunt of it. Oh. He needed help getting off the ice. So he couldn't really put any weight on one of his legs. Uh, from what I heard, though, it he didn't break anything. And he's probably going to miss a few weeks. But that could have been way worse. It's best case scenario if you're Barkov and the Panthers, to be honest with you. No bro, no bro, no Broken bones, no fractures, no nothing. Is it a sprain? And anything? I'm they didn't not say anything. Sure. I didn't. Hear... I know. El, I know. Elliot tweeted it out. Yeah, mm. I'm not. Sh- I don't know a ton of information about it off the top of my head, but it could have been way worse. You know, uh, I'm glad that it's not like a four to five month injury. To be honest with you, um, let's see. Oh, Matthew could chuck us out tonight too. All right, yeah. So honestly, it's only two to three weeks. He's optimistic he'll be back for the Global Series in Finland, and maybe even sooner than that. So got really lucky with this. To be honest, could have been a lot worse. Hopefully, yeah. he comes back within those two to three week time frame, and you know. Loss for Florida, but nice that it's a short term loss, not long term loss. All right. So next up, I want to move on to the San Jose Sharks mm-hmm. in their top six. First off, the elephant in the room, Celebrini, got placed on IR. Yeah. Thankfully, though, it's only minimum of seven days. It's not like this whole like couple month thing. I think it's 
his injury that he was dealing with when he got it in the preseason. Nothing yeah, they too probably major. Just give him a week to rest. You don't want it to linger during the season, which deservedly so. I wouldn't want that either. Although, did you see his goal it's on opening night? Kind of weird goal. I will say though, it was a very lucky goal. I mean, you take it. I mean, listen, you throw pucks to the net, they find their way in if you're a good player. I don't think he was throwing it to the good. net. I don't he, think... I, he, well, he tried to pass it, yeah. and it hit off somebody <laughs> yeah. and went in. I mean, he take it. Listen, I mean, good the... players create their own luck. I mean, the Sharks looked a lot better. They look great. Now, granted, they blew a 4-1 lead in the third and lost that's in pretty, overtime to the Blues. That's a bad look. Um, but I will say, though, their offense is going to be exciting. Eklund looked great. Will Smith looked great. Granlin had an assist. Same with Zetterlin at a power play goal. Like, this team looks good. Again, they might end up having five, four games like most of the season to be honest. They're going to score goals. They're not going to keep them out of the back of the net. I mean, is Askarov starting the year in San Jose? No, he's starting it in San Barracuda. Okay, that's probably the so, right thing to do. Yeah. Um. So, Mackenzie Black would look great in the first two periods. Third period, absolutely got decimated by the blues i mean their blue line is still pretty weak in san jose mm -hmm. i mean yeah. they i think obviously the focus this offseason was more of the forward core which has gotten better i mean they scored four goals right black because last year they couldn't score or keep they the couldn't puck score out of their to head. save their life so i mean you know hopefully you know celebrating it sounds like it's a day-to-day -day thing and they honestly might just be protecting him from himself you know he's a rookie first year number one overall pick he wants to prove himself he's going to push himself hard he's like dude like Okay, I know it's a little injury now, but if you keep pushing yourself and keep skating hard, like he you might make it worse. He probably feels fine now, but then like it's one of those things where it like you said, if you end up getting hit the wrong way, now it turns into something bigger and then now you're out, you know, a month. Like it's something that yeah, you just can't give play. Just through. give it a week, you know, rest, get it right, and then you know, come back feeling great. There's no reason to risk injuring it anymore. Nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's not like they're a playoff contending team or anything and they need him out there all the time. I will say he was exciting to watch. I know the game was at like 10 or 10.30, so I wasn't able to watch a ton of it. But I will say the first period was exciting. I'm excited for the Sharks' future. Greer, at first, when he came in, he was trading everybody, like cap dumps for like nothing. You're like, like Timo Meyer is like traded for quantity, not quality. You're like, what are we doing? Mike Greer is doing a good job in San Jose so far. I rebuilding mean, he has this a plan. Team. I mean, I, it's still the big... I, his plan. His original plan was just get rid of salary. Just create as much cap room I mean, as Yeah, you can. they get rid of Brent Burns, Timo Meyer. Uh, I think he was kind of lucky to get rid of Tomas uh, Hurdle. Hurdle's contract because mm -hmm. I, I didn't think he'd get traded at all. Honestly, if it wasn't for Vegas, I think Hurdle would not have gotten traded. Because I still that, that just came out of nowhere. Last that came year. at two fifty nine p.m. Because he was injured too, and I, I no one was even talking about it, like a player being available. Because I think he's on like year two or three of an eight year mm -hmm. deal, high cap hit. Career magic again happens with that. I mean, like I said before, like that trade made sense for Vegas because they needed another center, and they moved on from Stevenson. Yeah, and they have control for like six more years at five or six more years after that, and so I get it from Vegas. You'll take it if you're Vegas, to be honest with you. So San Jose, I mean, they don't they don't care. They just I mean the future's bright there. I mean, I think this year will probably be another down year, but you know they keep building. They're gonna have money to spend. Yeah, they can you know re, re, once Askarov's ready for the NHL. And they have better defensemen in front of them. I think this team could be scary in a few years. But, you know, we'll see it when they gets there. Listen, I'm excited. I'm going to move on to Utah here because I'm excited for this they team. They look great. Dylan Gunther is going to put up 50 goals per Clayton Keller. He's on pace for... Is that one of our players to watch last week? I thought, I, I thought we mentioned Gunther. I wanted to. No, we, we didn't mention it. We should have put Gunther, I thought I brought that dude. Up. Maybe you did. I'd have to watch it back. I forgot. I, think I, I thought I might have brought it up before we recorded because we yeah. were like, talking about it. I know we were talking about Genther for a while. Oh, no, I was talking about Beniers, not Genther. Didn't, I remember, we talked about his contract. Yeah, but. I remember Yeah, we we brought up Genther at some point. Anyways. Four, two games, four goals. He's on pace for 164 goals this season. I mean, season. That, that ain't happening, <laughs> but... <laughs> I, I, Kid I, looks good so far. I mean, the, the, team the whole looks team good. looks good. I mean, I, I mean, they probably have a little bit more energy now because they know like they have an owner that really wants to win. Cares about the players and like that the on ice product too. And like Clayton Keller put out a quote. I don't know the exact quote. I'm gonna try to quote it the best I can. But he said that it feels good that there's no distractions in the locker room and like around. That's not about. That's not taking a shot at Arizona and everything. It's taking a shot at Marulo. Yeah, about, I don't think. So I mean, the players wanted to stay in Arizona, especially a guy like Keller. He signed an eight-year deal to play in Arizona, right? And you know, have to move your team to another state. I, I mean, Utah is not super far away from Arizona, but you're still moving to a different part of the country. You got to move your whole family, get a new house, get settled in. Your kids got to go to a new school. Mm -hmm. 
you know, if Coyotes had a better owner, they're still in Arizona. Yes. And the, the, the Coyotes never had an owner that was truly committed to winning. He didn't show any, like, any attempt at doing it either. It's one thing to attempt and keep failing and failing. There was zero attempt. Like, th- he would sign, like, contracts that oh, the players were, wouldn't even play. They'd be they would on get to LTIR. the cap floor. Yeah. Or, yeah, trade for, like, uh, uh, Pavel Datsuk or right. Marion Hossa after they retired. Shea Weber. Like, yeah, Shea, I think Shea Weber's contract might still be on the books yep. there. I, no, I think they traded it to Vegas. Okay. I don't I honestly don't even know. I don't know. But, the, you know, they, they, that's what they historically did for a long time was they signed veterans to overpaid contracts, and they just trade them at the deadline with retaining half the salary just to get some draft picks. Then they they never really signed any of their players to – like their better – I mean, they were horrible at drafting for a while mm-hmm. too, and most of their better players, they ended up moving on because they didn't want to – like I don't think the players wanted to sign there because, like, we're not going to win. Yeah. And I remember a lot of people were surprised when Clayton Keller did sign that eight-year contract because – it was, you know, Arizona wasn't really committing to anybody. And I don't know if that was more of uh, him really believing in that they could win there and him just taking a chance. Or maybe the team really did feel. Because it's got to be frustrating from a GM standpoint where you want to spend money. You have all these draft picks. You know, I think it's a waste to get all those draft picks and just draft players, especially you know, the second, third round picks. Is, you know, if you get three first round picks, you, you're you're, you're not, it's not you, even if you only get one of them. You, you have like a, a one thirty three percent chance of getting one mm-hmm. hit, which is still really high because not every first, even the top five pick doesn't pan out all the time, right? Like when the Coyotes picked uh, Dylan Strom third overall, they don't work out with them. I mean, Strom's kind of rebounded. I don't know if he's ever going to live up to being third overall pick in the twenty fifteen I mean, draft. He was he was fine. He's been good in Washington, especially Mitch Marner went after him in that draft. <laughs> And then you have Eichel and McDavid go before him. Yeah. Um, but I, it's got, like I was saying, like it's got to be frustrating, especially as the GM part. Is you want to make these trades. You want to sign these players to long-term deals. You want to pay players what you think they're worth. You want to commit to winning. And the owner's saying no. Like, just keep trading away these players. Get all these draft picks. And now you finally have an owner who really wants to win. He wants to build a contending team in Utah. Give the fans something to cheer about. I mean, it's got to be electric down there in Utah for all their games. Good luck getting tickets. I mean, it's a smaller arena. It's a basketball arena. I'm they're putting the work into making it more accessible for hockey. I heard there's some really bad sight lines. In that I did arena. hear that too. Yeah, it's kind of reminds me of like Barclays Center when the mm-hmm. Islanders were playing in there in, in Brooklyn. But I mean, I feel awful for Coyotes fans because I think Utah is going to be great. I don't know. They might sneak into the playoffs this year if they keep playing like this. But I think in a year or two, they're just going to they're going to be full contenders. They're going to be a powerhouse, dude. The West, the West might be disgusting in a couple of years because you had Utah and Minnesota in there too. And, and the Sharks are building. San too. Jose, Chicago. Yeah. Like, and I'm looking at all these top teams. I don't see a singular top team right now that has a chance to fall off. Like what do you mean? Like I'm talking about like become like mid tier like a playoff bubble team. Like I don't know about Nashville yet. I'm not gonna throw them in the top tier conversation, but I want to see them play before I put any tarnish on their name. Yeah. Colorado, I think will be good. I think Vegas. Well, maybe Ve. Now nah, Vegas is gonna be Vegas. They have top guns. I mean Edmonton will be good as long as they have dry title. Correct. And McDavid. Vancouver is iffy though. Vancouver is really iffy. They're did, up who, and down. Did they end up winning last night? I was watching the start of that game. I don't. I didn't see who won. Oh, I didn't even realize they, they were played playing last the Flyers. Night. Yeah. Oh no, they lost. They lost three two in overtime. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I remember that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean the West is going to be loaded. I think, dude, these hockey teams are getting better and better, and better. Like we can see. A, I don't know if there's going to be a world where there's like at one point thirty teams at five hundred or higher at a five hundred points percentage or higher. I don't know about that. That's I, you, we, we'd have to do the because, math on that because you that's have, like theoretically possible. That is true. I mean, because then in the East, you also have the Canadians who are becoming like are building They're something. They're building. I think right now the Canadians is they could score a lot of goals. I mean, Montebo's looking better and better. He, he had a stole. Shutout. He had a shutout against Toronto the other night. Like yeah, like he forty. Said, stole what was the game. it? Forty-seven safe shutout. I think was the most saves. They in won the shutout. one nothing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, I will say though, Hildeby looks really good for the Maple Leafs too. It just sucks that he gets the loss on his record because it's not on him. Montreal no. should get two wins for that. To be honest with you, if he could. Yeah, I think like once once Montreal you know can get a little bit more consistent defensively, I think they're going to be they can already score a bunch of goals. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of great young forwards that are on long term deals. Give me be I I don't mean to get off track of Utah. We'll get back on track in a second. Give me three teams that you are excited to see in the future. I mean, I. I've, 
Utah. We just talked yeah. about. I think I I love the Sergachev trade too. I think Sergachev's been he's awesome been great. Uh, Montreal's a really really fun team to watch. Uh, they score a ton of goals really fast. A lot of high skilled players. And third team that I really like a uh, like a non contending team. Mm-hmm, right? Yeah. Hmm. Third one might be a little. T- I think the Wild are a lot of fun to watch too. I will. I I have San Jose, Chicago up there in the top five too. I think those are the top five teams for sure. I'm with you. All right. You know what's sad though is that in Utah, I'm not in Utah. In Arizona, the Utah games are blacked out. Yeah. Oh, I, why? That's I, stupid. I don't know if that's like I don't know if that's like a glitch on like their end where like they forgot to account for like oh like Arizona is not in the league anymore. Like we don't have to apply the blackout rules to them. Or if they're in Utah's TV market, I don't know how that works, but. Blackouts are stupid in general. I hate NHL blackouts. I just hate blackouts in general. Yeah, in any sport. I mean, part of the problem with it too is like, is, is well, you, you're only blacked out if you're in the TV market. Like, Correct. If you, have, like, if you have ESPN Plus here in the states, yo, it's like like the old NHL Center Ice. You pay. It's actually a really good deal. Was it like twelve dollars a month or something yeah. like that? And you get all the NHL. Talking about games. ESPN Plus. Yeah. yeah, I pay with the Disney Plus thing. I get ten ninety nine a month, and I get. Every single game except NHL Network, TNT games, or regional games. Yeah, but you get way more than just NHL games on there too. So, yeah, but it's it's a great deal. But like we're in Buffalo, like say the we wanted to watch the Sabers because the Sabers play all their games on MSG, which that channel's not really available. I'm not paying forty bucks a month to watch the Sabers lose. <laughs> yeah, so as far as I'm, as I'm aware, in in, in Buffalo. The only TV packages that MSG is available on, and I think you have to pay extra for it. You have to get like the Sports Plus mm-hmm. package, is uh, DirecTV, uh, Spectrum, and I think Fubo TV is the only streaming. Fubo, yeah. One that carries MSG. So unless you have one of those three, and in this day and age, not a lot of people even have TV subscriptions anymore. Right. Like, like not many people I know have cable still or satellite TV. I, I, I have streaming TV at home, like direct TV stream. Mm-hmm. So I get MSG, but, or you have MSG plus, which is $40 a month and you can only watch MSG. If you're a big Knicks fan and Sabres fan, and you like watching the devils and the Rangers, I mean, it's a great deal. Yeah. But if you only want to watch one team, I feel like that's a scam. It's pointless. So yeah. So in Buffalo, you cannot watch the Sabres on ESPN plus unless their game is exclusive to ESPN plus, or it's on ESPN that night. I will say the NFL and the blackouts. Um, I don't know how long ago it is. The MLB still does regional blackouts. Well, the, 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 I can't talk. The <laughs> NFL's blackout rules used to be ridiculous. It used to be if, unless the game was sold out, it would not be on TV. I remember when the bills were so bad, I couldn't watch the game on CBS because it was blacked out. Yeah, that was a ridiculous rule. It was like, yeah, you have to sell out the game or you can't watch it. I, I guess that was like their way of like trying to force fans to go to the games. Like, well, if you don't sell out, you can't watch it anyway, so you might as well go, which was ridiculous. I remember like like people were reporters like, oh, Ralph Wilson, when he was still alive, he's like, he bought out all the rest of the tickets so you can watch it on mm-hmm. TV. Like that was very, that was insane. Why, why yeah, was that a thing? Why make the owner do that? <laughs> like, I mean, he could afford it. But well, like, yeah, but like, the- but like you should just. They still make money from people watching mm-hmm. the games. Like I, I can't imagine the advertisers like that either. Right. The advertisers are like, dude, what the fuck? What are we doing here? Yeah. And the NHL needs to end this shit too. Like I got or make like- or make the regional sports broadcast easier to watch because I think I, I believe Vegas and I, I want to say Dallas. Dallas, yes. That you can watch all their games for free now. You yeah. You can stream it online on their website, which is awesome. It's great. And, uh, and they'd still make money from the advertisers during the TV timeouts. The, just it's a good, good way to. I, it doesn't have to be free, even if it's like cheaper to make it part of more TV. It could packages. be like 10, 15 bucks a month. Like I would purchase that to watch the Sabers or like any I, any fan if they had that type of money. And I was not. I'm making it sound like it's a shit ton of money. But if a fan's willing to spend 10, 15 bucks a month to go watch their favorite team online on their website, like they would do it. You're making money like that. But getting back to Utah and Arizona, like I feel like I'm not sure how many Arizona fans. I mean, I, I can't really relate to this because I've never had one of my teams like relocate. Mm-hmm. But I, I guess I could see some fans like getting really pissed off after the Coyotes left, and it's like either A, I'm not watching hockey again, yeah, or B, I'm not cheering for the Utah Hockey Club. I'm going to find a new team to cheer for. And there are some fans that will stick with the team that moved. Like they'll still cheer for Utah because you know it's all the same, most of the same players from the Coyotes, so like, you, you can still cheer for them. Yeah, but that's ridiculous that you can't watch their games there for the fans that did decide to like I want to keep watching like 
the old Arizona Coyotes, and you know, because I still I'm a fan of these players, and I still want to see them be successful. I don't get why they can't watch them. It's like punishing the fans. Yeah, and no I way. think they've been punished a lot already. <laughs> they have been beaten brutally to the ground, and the NHL is like, we're gonna keep that going up. I mean, I'm still remembering the last game they played in Arizona last year. It felt like a funeral. It did. Like at, at the end, everyone in the arena was crying, and it, it's tough. You took away the one of the only markets that you have, like for pro sport. Actually, I guess you have the oh, Phoenix Suns, you have the Arizona they Cardinals, have every Diamondbacks. Team. Now yeah, the only right. team they don't have is the NHL team. Yes, which I mean, NHL was growing down in the South, especially Arizona well, too. The, the pro- like I said, the, the problem with Arizona gets back to ownership. They're, when they had the big arena, it was in like a fucking half hour, forty five yep. minute drive away from Phoenix, and with traffic, like they had a game at like seven. It would take like an hour and a half to get there, and it wasn't worth going, especially because they sucked. And then they were playing in a college arena. If they had a stadium like in Phoenix or at least on the, close enough to the outskirts of Phoenix where it wouldn't be a pain in the ass to get there, because Phoenix is a really big city. Yeah, it's a nice city too. But like, if they were competitive and they had an actual arena that was relatively close to the city area, people would go to the games. I will say, though, that... If you because I mean are the other Arizona, Phoenix, do any of the other Phoenix teams have an issue with the Cardinals? I mean NFL, I don't really think. Dude, the any Cardinals. I'm pretty sure the Cardinals stadium is in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> but it's a fo- football's different. You know, they play one game a week, mm-hmm. and it's the NFL. And it, it, I'm pretty, and I'm pretty sure uh, the Phoenix Suns arena is downtown Phoenix, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I think the Coyotes wanted to approach them about playing in there. Like, nope, this, this is arena's only. It was mm-hmm. built for basketball. We don't want to share it. Yep. yep. And then the diamond, I mean, baseball's always weird. I think, I don't know where the, the diamondbacks, I think play in Scottsdale. Yeah. I could be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I would have to fact check that. If you guys are fact checking me in the comments, I don't really care to be honest with you. I mean, yeah, if you're still listening this far, you're a real one. So yeah. You should fact um, check us. Okay. So is that all we have on Utah before yeah, we move I mean, on like, to, because blackouts suck, but I mean, blackouts suck, uh, let the remaining Coyotes fans that are che- still going to cheer for Utah, let them watch the game. All right. Do you want to start a rant on the Sabres, or do you want me I mean, to go on? Because the Sabres are 0-3. They have three goals for. Their expected goals for. I, I'm an analytics guy. I know you don't want to hear this. Sabres fans don't want to hear this. Their expected goals for is 6.57, and they're, they're negative 3.57 goals below expected, which means they're getting unlucky. They're getting goalied. But – you have to find a way. Just get through it. Get through it. Like well, Lindy I get... Ruff had a great quote the other night. He said, "Look, I know we we can't score right now, so it's either we're gonna figure it out or every goal we play is going to the All Star game." <laughs> Dude's a fucking beauty. I mean, for that, that. that's a great quote. I mean, and he ain't wrong because you know, I was at the game on on Thursday, it was the season opener. They they should have won that game. They dominated the Kings for. 90% of the game. They get into penalty trouble at the end. The officiating wasn't the greatest, but Samuelson took a really stupid... They were already shorthanded, less than three minutes to go in the game. Samuelson takes a really stupid slashing penalty where he breaks the dude's stick in half. Like, they're always going to call that. Did what are he, you doing? Did he end up, like, two-handing him? It wasn't, like, like a I chop. Like a chop but, like, but, like, he got his stick, and it broke it clean in half. And, like, they're going to call that 10 times out of yeah. 10. Like, that's textbook slashing. The stick breaks your hands going up right away. Yeah. Like, if it would have been a lighter tap, they probably don't call that, but you break it in half. Right. You, you're hitting their stick hard enough to break it in half, yet they're going to call that. They go on a five on three. The Kings score to take the lead. And that was pretty much all she wrote for the game. The, the arena felt, after that, it felt, literally felt like somebody died in the arena. Not many people were talking. You know, me and Chris on our drive home after the game didn't say a damn thing. Well, to it each was other. brutal. I, I, was, I was at work, so I wasn't able to watch most of the game. But I put on a couple bets, and I can't believe my anytime goal scorer on Alex Tuck hit. That was beautiful. Um, but I thought the Kings were going to – now, I know we always play the Kings tough, but I had Dylan Cousins' two-plus shots hit. I had Lukanen 22-plus saves hit in, like, the second period. No, sorry. No, no, no. Darcy Kemper saves. Kemper? 20, I mean, Kemper had a great game. He had 22-plus saves. I That hit – Lukin in 27 plus saves didn't hit. I thought the Kings were going to play better. And Anze Kopitar, Kopitar had a Hattie, that a dude, Natty that Hattie. That's amazing. 37 years old, putting up a Natty Hattie in his first game of the season. Great for him. The Sabres should have won. They they had a, they had should have won. They, nine times out of ten, they win that game. And 
There were, were there two instances or just one instances where the buzzer beat the goal? Was it just the Benson one or was there a second one too? Uh, this is the first just, one. Just the Benson one? Yeah. Benson missed the goal by literally one-tenth of a second. Yep. One-tenth of a second. The Sabres hit a couple posts. Um, Alex I mean, Tuck's- uh, Ryan McLeod had a break, uh, penalty shot. It completely fucked up on the move, but... I, that was that was a good idea. Poor execution on it. I mean, I mean, if I were him, I would, he's so fast. Just just go in there, it's turbo mode. <laughs> Pull on, put on the brakes the last second, and then freeze the goalie. Right. I don't know if he's if he has Off good topic here, hands. but that just reminded me. One of my favorite shootout moves of all time was when Patrick Kane was just going like slow as hell, just going crazy. And the goalie's like, what the fuck do I do? And he just shoots it. He's done that right a in. bunch of times. And the one that I remember is the one against the Minnesota Wild where he does about 25 stick handles in like 10 seconds. Not, no, it can't be 10 seconds, but like five seconds. And then absolutely gets the goalie going one way and he just slams the puck in the middle of the neck on the other way. Okay, back to the Sabres though. <laughs> like, get, like when Lindy Ruff said, like, we're going fi- to we're, we're gonna score, like, He's right. I mean, if they keep playing like this, they should score more. Not every goalie is going to have a career game against them, hopefully. Well, we're going to have to face Jake Allen again, probably so. Yeah, but... Uh, although I, I don't even know what to say about this At least we anymore. don't get Sergei Bobrovsky tonight. Although, Spencer Knight seems... It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> it's just... I, I, I don't even know what to say about this team anymore. It's been so long since they've been pretty uncompetitive in the mm-hmm. league. They're 0 and 3. I know it's a long season, but you're already in a hole. You got to win 3 straight to get back to 500. You know, they're playing the defending Stanley Cup champions tonight. We'll know tomorrow like when you guys are listening if they're 0 and 4, which you can probably laugh at us probably more. 85% that they're on for tomorrow. Yeah, like Chris uh, sent us a message like Barkov's out tonight and Chuck's not playing. It's like, "Oh great, the Sabres are going to lose 4 to 2 tonight." <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's that's how Buffalo fans are now. Like you, like after the first game, fans were freaking out. It's because just you're told something by the management and by the ownership, and then the other, the exact opposite happens. It's like okay, it's this- not even that for me anymore. It's just we've been bad for so long. You know, I'm very passionate about them. You know, I've season tickets, watching them probably too much the last few years. You know, I watched a lot of games with that Eichel, and it was really frustrating because you could see the talent on the team. You know, for long, oh, coaching's holding us back. Okay, Don Granado, we missed the playoffs by a point. It's like, okay, we're back. We're going to be a playoff team. They take another step back. They bring back Lindy Ruff, which felt to me like a move to get people in the seats. You know, I love Lindy. He was a great coach for the Sabres for a long time. I don't know if he has it still. Mm-hmm. You know, with what happened in New Jersey last year, there was a lot of factors that went into them not being great. The old goaltending, a lot of injuries, but still. Oh, Speaking of that, somebody brought up in one of our comment sections on YouTube about the Devils and Lindy Ruff and everything, and Andrew Burnett was in on Lindy Ruff staff in twenty two twenty three. Yeah. He I think leaves. I might have saw that comment. Yeah, yeah, he leaves. Go to Nashville, and Lindy Ruff shits the bed, and the Devils shit the bed. Coincidence? It might not be. I mean, Burnett's but a great I'm just coach. Saying, I mean, I, I'm he, just saying it he, could he, be. If Tockett didn't completely turn the devil and um, then the Canucks around last year, I think Tockett. I mean, I, I can't. I can't <laughs> Burnett, talk. And... Burnett probably wins Coach of the Year last year. Yeah, with yeah. what he did with Nashville, because they did not. Nobody thought they were going to be that. They good were supposed last year. to be like an 82 point team. Yeah, and like not a playoff team. I mean, that that run they had last year, like oh, after like, that Vegas trip, was insane. That was disgusting. Um, but back on topic with the Sabres, yeah, I don't really have too much more to add on the Sabres, except I'm just, at this point, I'm just being, I'm done being patient. I, I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, like, defeated at this point. Like, I don't even know what to say. Like, like now, I'm, I mean, I remember when everybody was calling us, like, pessimistic about the Sabres after, the, uh, after like, all of, like, the offseason stuff and everything, and now we're on three. Now, I'm not going to panic yet because we're on three. Actually, I'm going to ask you this. Was, on a scale of zero to ten, how much are you panicking right now? Or does I don't know. I, I, I I'm more I'm not really panicking, I'm just angry. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm upset. You know that song by Drake, I'm upset, yeah, it's playing right now. Background. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I can't really pan I, I I don't think panic's a good word to describe how I'm feeling at all because Does it almost feel like empty? Like you have yes, no hope. I, I like feel no like, hope. Like w- 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 I, I don't even know what to say anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I get. I tried to get excited every year, and they let me down every year. Mm. And I feel like I'm not even allowed to, you know, be excited about going to games. 
It's like you go to a game, you're like, okay, I get to see NHL hockey in person. It's like, oh, here's a four to one loss, right? It's, I mean, I mean, it's the the same. They haven't been good since I was like 12 years old, 13 years old. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just tired, man. Yeah, tired. No, I I get it. And I'm sick of all these non Sabres fans. Like, I don't get like, I like. Poor Sabres fans. But don't worry. You guys have a bright future. You have a lot I of feel pop- bad for We've Sabres We've been saying fans. that for fucking years. Like, I know we have good prospects. I know we have good players in the team now. But I want to win now. Yeah. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't care anymore. We don't want to wait another two years. I, yeah, I don't want to, you know, oh, next year they're gonna be, they'll be better. Oh, just wait till like, you know, this prospect's ready to go. You know, oh, we got Consta Hellenius. He's going to be a great <laughs> NHLer in a few years. I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I'm sick of this, man. Like, I feel like I care more about winning than this organization does. I mean, I'm sure we all do, too. Because, I mean, I I don't know if, Ter- if Terry Gould didn't buy the Sabres. I don't know if Buffalo even has a hockey team still. And it does feel like they are trying to upgrade the arena and, and put some more, uh, make it a better game day experience. But if the on-ice product is still shit, it doesn't matter. Listen, a new roof is how the Sabres win. I will make that meme until the day they make the playoffs. Like, <laughs> yeah, you might be you might be in your forties by the time that happens. I mean, it's nothing. I'm not. I mean, with the Bills, like, I didn't even know what the playoffs were in Buffalo for mm-hmm. the Bills until I was freaking eighteen years old. Yeah, like, so it, it has to end eventually, right? It sucks because I look at my favorite sports teams. I'm a Bills fan. They're good, but they can't get over the hump. Sabres fans haven't been to the playoffs since 2011. I'm 23 if right now. If you would have told me when I was like eight or nine years old that I would have been to a Bills playoff game before I went to a Sabres playoff game, I would have said, called you're, you crazy. You're crazy because they were at the Bills were a complete ass, and the Sabres were playoff teams almost every year. I will say it feels worse though because I'm a Mariners fan. They've made the playoffs once in my 23 year of existence. <laughs> So I'm a Sabres fan and I have to deal with the Mariners. Come on. Sabres, pick it up, dude. Fuck. But at this point, like, I just feel like I'm being punished for something. Like, I mean, I mean, it could be worse. It could be Arizona. I, I don't know. At least they don't have anything to get angry about anymore. That is true. I mean, now Utah's looking great, but then Terry, I feel like just Terry Pergula just doesn't care. I mean, and I will say, if, if I'm him, I feel it's like pretty simple. When the team does better, you do better because fans are excited. They're buying more. You're selling out more games. People are buying more jerseys, more merchandise. You make more money. Come on, like yesterday's game, Thursday's game was a sold out crowd. You're t- and the team sucks. The team sucks, and it was sold out. I mean, but the, they were play, outplayed. The, that's the that's the worst part is they outplayed the Kings almost the whole game. The crowd is really into it, and I, I, I'm not joking. When the Kings scored that second goal to take the lead, it literally like half the arena got. You could hear a pin drop. But like it felt like like every nobody was even talking to us. Like they just felt like we were defeated. Mm-hmm. Like it was like what the fuck do we do? Like we're zero and three. Like is this ever gonna end? Yeah, and now here we are. Play the Panthers. We're in must-win territory for the Sabres. Yeah, it's game four of the year. and Like, it's, it's stupid. It's, it's because we have no trust in the team anymore. Like, if, you're, if you last season take another step, either make the playoffs, get swept, or you're still a point out, it's like you start 0-4, you have trust in the team. You don't have trust because last season you took a step back. Well, yeah, last year was probably the most excited I've been for a Sabres mm-hmm. season in a long time. Yep. You know, we missed the playoffs by one point. Brought almost everybody back. You know, Tage was looking like a superstar. You know, Darlene took that next step. Like, it looked like we were, and we had Devin Levi, you know, who was great down the stretch for his first year in the league. And then they shit the bed last year. They were worse. I mean, I, we weren't the only ones saying that. Like, everyone was saying that the Sabres should make the playoffs last yes, year. Yes, we had the Sabres in top three in the Atlantic. I didn't. Sorry, I had them as I a wild card okay. team. I was, that I was had them little, second. Yeah, that was a little crazy. Me and Chris had them in second, I will say. I mean, I was also crazy. I, I think I had the Panthers not even making the playoffs. That's or true. Something. And now I don't I – don't, neither of us have the Sabres making the playoffs this year, right? No, I don't yeah, think they're yeah, a playoff I team. No, I mean, they're, they're 0-3 already. Right. I mean, I would say, like, you know, teams in that wild card conversation are, are better than them. You know, Islanders. Better. Detroit's better than them. Better. Ottawa looks better than them. Better. I don't know about Pittsburgh. I need to see him play more. They got the shit beat out of them. I will game. say Joel Bloomquist looks good, though. Yeah. Looks really good. He played great against Detroit. I mean, Jari ain't that good. Jari's not, no. I mean, I, I, I know they played Bl- the Rangers the first game of the year, and they, they got their ass beat, and the Rangers are good, but 
They Bloom, still got their ass. Bloomquist might take Jari's job by the end of the year, I think. Yeah, Jari's contract's looking worse and worse. It's as looking time bad. Goes on. It's but, looking bad. You know, Washington. Yeah, Washington, I think, is ahead of the Sabres. Mm-hmm. I mean, at this point, Montreal might be ahead of the Sabres. Dude, Montreal. At least they can fucking score. That's true. <laughs> I, I will say that Caulfield goal was pretty sick. Caulfield's disgusting. That, dude, that dude reminds me of uh, Marty St. Louis, but with a better oh. shot. Oh, yeah. I mean, Marty St. Louis is the perfect coach for him. Oh, Montreal. yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I don't think there could be any better coach for, uh, for, for Cole Caulfield than, you know, another – legendary smaller player in the league i love it i love it all right i know we went on a little bit of a tangent there for the sabers because we're sabers fans all right last thing we're gonna do we're starting something new this season spicing the episodes up a little bit gonna do a fantasy draft Mm -hmm. this is how it's gonna work so we're each gonna draft a lineup of two left wings two centers two right wings two d-men doesn't matter left or right shot and then one goaltender each and then so we're gonna do two teams a week so me and him pick from the same two teams so there's also a little twist of let's say this because this week we have the Islanders and the Jets. Next week we cannot use the Islanders and the Jets. Well, it's randomized every week. Yeah. So we spin a wheel. a wheel. I mean, maybe we could have that be a part. Yeah, we can maybe make we, it a part next week. You can week. like edit it like a digital wheel. And so yeah. We can, like do it. Blind. Yeah, that'd be sick. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. But, um, go ahead. Sorry. No, yeah. So this week we 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 we're kind of a little prepared. So the point system, real quick to go over it for. Goal anytime doesn't matter. Shorthanded power play one point five assists one point block shot zero point three hits point three and then Hatties you get an extra point. Goaltenders you have for a win four points a loss negative two points goes against negative zero point five points and a save point zero one points. Are you ready, sir, for the first ever fantasy I mean, draft? Who's the first pick? What's up? Who's the first pick? Uh, you know what you can do first pick. I forgot to do that, but you can have the first pick. I'm gonna uh, wait, 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 real quick. We're gonna. Are you fine with the snake draft? Or do you uh, want to go back and forth? Because if, if it's a snake draft, you pick if you want first or second. I'll do second. Then. Okay. All right. Sick, sick. So my first pick, I'm going to take... Ooh, we're going to go... We're going to go Kyle Connor, a left wing. Okay. And then my, my first two picks, I guess, are going to be uh, Matthew Barzell and Connor Hall. I knew that was going to be it. All right. My next pick, now that I can wait, Defense, we're going to go with Noah Dobson. Okay. You have the next one, too. And then I'm also going to go Mark Shifley. Hold on. I should probably write this down for myself. All right. Go ahead. Uh, I'm taking Josh Morrissey. Okay. And Bo Horvat. Okay. I like that. No. We're going to go. Ooh. You know. Wait. Okay. Let's see. Let it go. Right wing. We're going to go Nikolai Ehlers. And we're going to go Adam Pellick. More of a defensive defenseman, but I respect it. So uh, I'm going to go I'm another defenseman. We get four defensemen? Uh, two defensemen. Okay. Uh, I'll go with another guy in the Jets. Uh I just forgot his name. Hold, give, give me a second. You're good. Out. Is it a defenseman or forward? Defenseman. Defenseman. Uh, DeMello? No. Uh, Pionk? Yeah, Neil Pionk. Okay. Uh, yeah, I go with Neil Pionk. Okay. So I got my two defensemen. I got Morrissey and Pionk. I got Bor Horvat. And uh, Matt Barzell. I'm going to go Seven, with... Two D. You took Eli- Ehlers and Ehlers. Did you yeah. take Shifley? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, then I'm going to go with Brock Nelson. Okay, all right. So I need another center, another left wing, and another right winger, and a goaltender. So let's see. We're going to go Cole Perfetti for left winger. Okay. And then we're going to go... Hmm. Something's telling me to... Oh, you know what? We'll go... We'll spice it up a little bit, and we'll go Adam Lowry. Okay. You're going with some defensive guys. Uh, I'm going to go with Andres Lee. Okay. And Vlad Nemestikov. Okay. And now my last guy is going to be Anthony Duclair and... 
Where is it? Uh, some. Well, you know, we'll go. Ooh, I'm gonna go Sorokin. Why not over Varlamov? Okay. I mean, I don't Do know you, how many games he's gonna play. I have no idea. Week. I don't even know. I don't know who's starting tonight. Week. Yeah. Then I'm gonna go with. I need two more forwards. I don't remember if I need wingers or, or centers. It did. Oh well. Uh, so I got. I, I, it seems like all my forwards are Islanders, and my two defensemen yeah. are, are, are Jets. So I'm gonna go with. Alex, I follow. Okay. And. Uh, JG Pajot. Okay. All right. I like that. I like that. All right. Um. So I'm trying to make. Sh- okay. Yeah. I have. I have Connor Shifley, Dobson, Pelic, Ehlers, Sorokin, Lowry, Duclair. I feel like I'm missing a guy. I think you are missing a guy. I think you have one more pick. Um. Because I got Barzell, Horvat. Lee, Brock Nelson, J.G. Peugeot, and Mestikov. You have Paul Mary? No, I didn't pick Paul Mary. All right, I'm going to go Paul Mary then. I feel like this is going to be good. Um, next week, we'll come a little bit more prepared. I think we'll actually have it where we actually uh, jot down our stuff like by position so we don't get confused like we did today. Yeah. However, <laughs> though, this is going to – I think it's a work in progress, but it's going to be fun, though. So Yeah, it should be fun. We're both keep zero track, and zero. Keep track of it all year. Of course. So, who knows? Maybe we'll spice things up here and there. Um, that's going to end it for today's episode. If you guys enjoy all of our content, all of our socials are down below in the description below. If you guys are on YouTube, subscribe, notification bell. Thank you, guys. If you guys are listening on Apple, Spotify, or wherever else, head over to our YouTube, subscribe. More content on our Instagram as well as join our Discord for Hockey Talk all season long, including the off season. We'll see you guys in our next episode.